So in this video, I start doing some test-driven development on REST mod text adventure, and it starts off really well. So I'm working on my REST mod game at the moment, and since I'm designing it, and programming, and testing it, and playtesting it, I thought it'd be a useful example to work through a test strategy from start to finish and show you why I do certain things, how we can do test driven development, how we can do functional automate coverage, how we can uh, do integration testing from an automated perspective internally, how we can write code which supports our testing and actual testing effort, not just uh, we are doing it because we have tested it now we want to automate it we're writing the automated code first as we test it so that we use our interactive exploration later on to actually test things that we hadn't thought about in advance so i'm going to go through that whole thought process so first of all i'll give you a quick reminder if you haven't seen anything before of how rest mud works rest mud is basically a web server. It has a web GUI interface which takes HTTP GET requests and responds with HTML. The HTML is generated from moustache templates. We've got a REST API which can have GET and POST requests. It will accept JSON and it will return JSON or XML. We have a game, a set of game objects internally which the web server converts the input JSON into a an object which passes into the game. So we've got a fairly strict delineation between stuff that only runs when it's a server and stuff which can run when we are testing it in here. And I can do the vast bulk of the actual testing work within the code itself, within the application. I don't have to start it up in order to test it. There are risks by doing that because I'm not uh, checking that the HTTP GET requests work, that the GET formats work, that we can't send in bad requests, but when we send in good requests, then I can check that the actual game responds effectively. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to start on a new puzzle, a puzzle which I've created purely for this example. So if you do play the game, then you'll see this puzzle in there, but this puzzle is so simple it won't make any difference. So I have created a design for this. And I've added it into my map document before I even start. I have in the code created, there we go, some notes of what the puzzle is going to do. These notes will disappear as I write tests to cover this code. I have written nothing yet. None of these locations work. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start by writing some TDD, test driven design. I'm going to write tests to drive out the code that I want to see. So I'm going to copy this first into my tests. And that is going to be the guide that I'm going to use to create this stuff. Now what you see in this video is I will fast forward through stuff, I will cut things out because you don't need to see everything. What I'm going to show you are general principles. But the first thing I'm going to do is start with that test and we'll just check that we can navigate to the vas puzzle room. Now you can see here that these rooms have different numbers. That's because when I was uh, creating the design and, and working through the, the puzzle, I realized it was too obvious if uh, we hit the hammer room after the puzzle. I just haven't changed that. So the first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to change these items back. So I'm just thinking through this, change the design. I have to change this. So that's my design change. Now I'm going to add this as a test. Now you can see I've got a fairly high level API for this stuff. And the first thing I want to do is I want to start here because I know that room three exists. So I'm going to start in room three. Then I'm going to say, I want to, then I'm going to say I want to be able to successfully navigate down to 
room 18. So go south from room 3, I should be in room 18. So I say, I'm in room 3, I go south, I should be in room 18. Right, and what I can do then is I can run this test and it should fail. Great. So at the moment, none of these locations exist. So I'm just going to create these, add some tests to do it. So bear with me while I do that. First thing. So you can see that during the course of that, um, I added some code that I thought was going to create that location. I ran the test, discovered that I couldn't actually go from 3 to room 18 because I hadn't amended room 3 at the same time. So I'm just going to carry on like this. The temptation is just to go straight back into the game and start writing out all the, the code for the puzzle in here or just add all the locations in here because um, I'm fairly sure that I can get it to work. But if something goes wrong, my test at the end will just fail in all the different asserts and it's much easier for me to be convinced that this works if I see it failing at each stage. Right? If I write a whole bunch of stuff and it kind of passes accidentally, then I'm not necessarily going to believe that this thing works. Or I probably shouldn't believe that this thing works and then continues to work. So what I want to do is do it step by step. TDD is about forcing yourself to do this step by step to add the condition into the test, then run it, see it fail, and then write the actual code to implement this. So now that we've started in the next video, we're going to write a lot more code using TDD. And we're going to do exploratory testing at the same time. Tune in. Or, or don't. Tune in.